Our next speaker is Georgina Sentis. Georgina is going to talk to us about, from evidence to policy making, the renewing health experience. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Georgia Sentis, and I work for Arsenal IT, that is the um, regional um, competence center for e health innovation for the Veneto region. Um, my presentation is focused on the experience and the, and the uh, work uh, carried out uh, in the context of the Renewing Health project. It is a European research uh, initiative promoted by the European Commission and involving nine um, European regions with um, the common aim to evaluate uh, the use of personal health system for um, telemonitoring services uh, addressed to patients with uh, diabetes, COPD, and cardiovascular diseases, all with a um, common methodology uh, adopted by the World Partnership, an HTA methodology, in order to um, prepare the roadmap um, to allow in the future the large-scale deployment of such services. Uh, the starting point <laughs> for this project was the um, partial or total lack of evidence uh, about the overall impact of telemon telemonitoring service, not in ideal circumstances, but in real life settings. Um, to address this, um, this need, uh, the partnership decided to adopt a um, um, randomized controlled trial design for the uh, clinical study uh, in the world partnership, also in order to compare results uh, obtained in the region. Um, well, um, the pathway in the Veneto, well, I, my presentation is particularly focused on um, the activities um, carried out in, uh, in the Veneto region for a particular target of patient, uh, patient with congestive heart failure, uh, that in our region are quite frequent flyer, flyer users of uh, our healthcare services, especially when the age increases. We, um, we uh, designed and developed with our physicians um, uh, a combination of telehealth and telecare services that are represented by, uh, represented by this picture. Basically, the patient is um, equipped at home with a um, set of biomedical devices used to measure clinical parameters, and also with an alarm, um, a panic button device used by, uh, by the patient to um, detect emergency situation at home. All these data are automatically transmitted to a regional EL center. Here there, are, um, there is a um, staff, uh, staff of operators uh, that are in charge of keep the data uh, monitored and in case of alarm, um, clinical parameter over thresholds, uh, they are in charge of uh, alerting um, the proper interlocutor that can be the GP, the hospital physician, but also the social workers or just the family, uh, according to the type of alarm that can be uh, about health conditions, but also an, um, a, social, a social alarm. Well, we um, adopted a double uh, approach uh, to uh, both collect evidence about the impact of these services and also to transform the evidence in policy recommendation. Um, as, the, um, as well as uh, the other eight regions in the partnership, we adopted the uh, MAST model, that is a net technology assessment multidisciplinary approach, uh, specifically conceived for telemedicine services. And the model includes uh, seven evaluation domains um, that reflects the main aspects that uh, characterize a telemonitoring service. And then once obtained uh, the, the evidence uh, about each domain, we adopted in our region um, a business model tool to put together all the outputs and make clear which are the benefit and um, the added value of the service. This is a I jump uh, fast. Um, this is a useful tool to assess the, um, which we consider the three drivers of innovation of a service. Um, that is um, the feasibility of the service by a technical and organizational point of view. 
uh, the desirability of the service because the service produces gener um, clinical, uh, organizational, and uh, social benefits, and the viability of the service because it is uh, economically sustainable. Um, this is a um, clear template also to um, transmit the message uh, to our, our policy makers that, are, uh, that have to decide about the future implementation of such services on large scale. Okay, jumping to the, um, uh, to the study, uh, we, um, first of all, we enrolled patients uh, according to a specific eligibility criteria that uh, our physician um, agreed uh, during the study design. Um, we randomized the patients in an intervention in a control group, and uh, we um, followed them uh, during a follow-up period of one uh, year, and we keep monitoring the um, um, data about uh, the outcome indicators that, all, um, again, our physician decided uh, during the study design. Uh, the primary uh, outcome um, selected was the uh, combination of uh, mortality of, for all the causes and the hospitalization for heart failure. Well, I jump directly to the results because the, um, this, the study, well, the project has, um, was concluded at the end of the, uh, 2013. Uh, even if the follow-up period is not concluded yet for all our patients, so please consider these uh, results as preliminary uh, because just for this cluster, few, um, just few patients have to uh, complete the follow-up period. About the clean, we, we collect very impressive uh, results about the clinical effect effectiveness of the service. Uh, this uh, graph shows the um, uh, evolution of the improvement in the intervention group of the three uh, main uh, significant uh, outcomes uh, during the follow-up period. You can note that uh, in the first part of the follow-up, uh, the reduction, reduction of the outcomes in the intervention group uh, was, very high, was very high, and then uh, the, the, the trend um, decreases over the time to get stable uh, at the end of the follow-up. But anyway, you can observe uh, an impressive reduction in the uh, number of hospitalization because in the intervention group, the 30% of hospitalization was avoided, and the same uh, for the uh, combined outcome, we obtained a 19% uh, reduction in the intervention group of the mortality plus uh, the hospitalization for the air failure. We carried out also an economic uh, analysis uh, with a societal perspective. Uh, I mean, we consider both the cost for the patients and the cost for the healthcare provider, uh, the local health authorities in our case. We, um, firstly, we decided to consider the ICER uh, index, that is an economic index used when uh, usually the intervention costs more, uh, to estimate the cost of the uh, clinical benefit produced. But in our case, well, after the analysis, we uh, abandoned this uh, idea because we found that uh, the um, cost for patient, the average cost for patient in intervention group was um, lower. So we produced benefits with a lower cost. And then we uh, defined also um, the business case um, from the perspective uh, of the Veneto region. Uh, we uh, built this process considering all the potential users of this service. Uh, and in our case, we used the, um, the number of patients that in 2008 as at least one hospitalization, and uh, they are over uh, 65. So we uh, calculated that, we estimated that um, we have a net benefit uh, per year of uh, more than 6,000 of euro. So positive again. We carried out also an organizational analysis um, by identifying uh, for all the main players, all the uh, tasks assigned for the service provision, patient included. And for the part of uh, nurse physician, uh, we um, made some interviews uh, with all of them, to, uh, asking them about how much time they spent uh, to make all the tasks um, planned. 
uh, in order to uh, estimate how many patients um, can be followed with the telemonitoring services by just one, uh, just one person. And we found that um, during a year, one full-time equivalent can follow together more than 1,000 of patients thanks to the service. The last dimension that I describe you is the patient, uh, patient uh, perception. Uh, we had a um, specific uh, evaluation domain uh, where we, uh, the whole uh, Renewing Health Partnership used a um, quantitative questionnaire that was developed in another similar research program in the UK, uh, the World System Demonstrator. Um, the questionnaire explores six um, subscales corresponding to um, uh, different feelings of the patient toward the service, and we found uh, very positive results uh, for all the subscales. Uh, some are negatives because are associated to negative feelings, and some are some other are positive because associated to positive feelings. Uh, we found that the patients uh, are uh, very satisfied about the service in general. They are not concerned, uh, less concerned than than before, and more uh, involved. Um, about the negative feelings, uh, patients are not obsessed by, uh, about privacy implications. They don't be afraid. Uh, they, um, they are not afraid of this, and they, are, um, they uh, don't have particular concerns about the care they received. And another important topic that can um, seem obvious, but it is very important to remember, is that they don't um, consider the telemonitoring kit service in this case as a, a total replacement of the face-to-face -face -face consultation with their physician. So it's an, an useful and additional support, in their opinion. Well, we took uh, also a picture on the, um, um, on the impact on caregivers, because in our studies, they have been uh, a very important players, because they were involved from the very beginning during the enrollment of patients and they uh, gave uh, an important support to patients during the data collection, um, during the measure, measurement of clinical parameters. Um, they, they have been happy with the service because they feel less concerned about the care of their relatives. Uh, they save time because uh, if, you, uh, if we um, uh, avo um, avoid uh, visits, they save their time. For out, for out of work, and so positive results again. And then we have tried to um, put all the information that we uh, collected uh, from the study to, um, to set a set of recommendations that we uh, suggest, not just to our politician, but they can be transferable, I, I think, in, uh, in other re realities in Europe. First of all, Talking about clinical, um, clinical dimension, um, we, we have to face with a um, huge increase of, this, of chronic patients in general in, uh, in Europe, so uh, the demand of healthcare service will increase naturally. So if you um, are able to avoid uh, those um, accesses to healthcare facilities, the, uh, facilities that are not um, needed, we can save beds for people that really need um, healthcare attention in hospitals and nursing homes. Um, as, you, um, and as you observed um, in the slide about clinical evidence, um, the, during the first uh, part of the follow-up, we obtained a very big um, difference, a very big improvement of uh, our um, uh, clinical outcomes. And uh, this suggests us that the telemonitoring service should be conceived for patients that need a stabilization of the, of the disease and not as a long, very long-term provision of care because uh, otherwise the service can, be, can get um, a new, um, useless because uh, especially if you, if you have already a good alternative uh, for uh, the usual care. Uh, by an organizational point of view, um, it is fundamental to rethink the organizational process, the organizational model where, where uh, you are going to introduce your technology. This is because technology has a cost, 
And if you don't rethink, if you don't uh, re-engineer uh, your processes, you will have the same organization, but with more costs. Um, for example, in our experience, um, key factor has been um, the, um, the work carried out by the um, e regional EL center in uh, intermediating between the patients and the clinicians, because especially at the beginning of the follow-up, we collected a lot of false alarms produced by patients because they uh, need time to get um, familiar with the technology used. So uh, the role uh, of the staff of, um, of the e-health center operators was fundamental in filtering just through alarms and um, involve clinician, clinicians only uh, when needed. The e-health uh, e operators can uh, do another useful thing, that is giving social support uh, to these patients. They, many times these patients live alone, and so they need social attention as well. And last but not least, uh, what the, our clinicians suggest us is to, and it is our next challenge, is to integrate the telemonitoring data directly in the tool used by the, uh, the clinician, such as electronic medical record or electronic healthcare record. And the la my sli uh, last slide is about uh, the customer dimension. Uh, it is important to guarantee the privacy policy uh, even if uh, patients are not so obsessed <laughs> about uh, what, um, where their data go, uh, the important for them is that someone look at this data and take care of them. Um, it is fundamental to involve clinicians from the very beginning of the study design because otherwise they can feel the service just as an, um, an additional workload without, um, without uh, considering the, the added value of the service. It is important to um, involve the patient through, the, uh, through a trusted clinician. The uh, patient uh, perception change at all. Uh, and also caregivers should be involved from the very beginning because they um, give an important support to patients. They uh, help them to make measurements and motivate them. And the last point is to focus on patient empowerment. Tra training, um, you have to train patients uh, from the very beginning, because otherwise you, um, uh, um, you're going to receive a lot of uh, useless data uh, and someone has to um, keep them filtered uh, continuously. So it is important uh, to foster self-management and the training of such patients. And that's all, if uh, someone has any questions. We can take one quick question. Yes. Well. Presentation. Um, you said that uh, um, one full-time equivalent can handle a patient work, patient load of a thousand patients. That's uh, that's pretty amazing because we've seen about 100, 1 to 100 or 1 to 150 in Canada and I know the Veterans Administration in the U.S., so that's amazing. Yes, just if you rethink uh, the processes in a clear way by an organizational point of view because um, if there is some, someone checking the, um, the data before the clinician uh, makes in the intervention, you can reduce the workload of the clinician that is involved just in case of real alarm. So from the same uh, workstation, uh, one full-time equivalent can control all these patients. We make the um, calculation by considering all the timing that the clinician um, said to spend on each activities. And we, um, well, we calibrate this estimation also with the uh, working hours of cl a clinician and a working hour of a nurse, and we obtain, uh, obtain it such estimation. Okay. So, so the intermediary uh, that's doing the monitoring, can you talk a little bit about um, the number of patients that that intermediary handles for uh, tracking the patients in the field, please? You are talking about the... The person who's doing the monitoring. That's a, new, uh, that's a new role that's set up, right? 
No, well, um, for the study, we involved both clinicians and nurses, and according to the um, decision of each local health authority, they decide to uh, assign the task of um, react to the true alarms to nurses or physicians. And each local uh, health authority decides autonomously how organizing um, each department, uh, um, its department to follow up such patients. So I don't know if I answered your question. That's well, great. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all we have time for. So thank you very much, Georgina. Excellent.